Arrays create a number of copies of a mesh. It is a useful modifier if you want to create large scenes or create complex repetitive shapes. Let's have a look at the options we have here. The first fields we will look at are the fit type and count fields. The fit type essentially controls how the length of the array is calculated. With fixed count, we are granted this field called count, which simply allows us to specify how many times we want the mesh to be copied. So for example, if I change this from one to two, it gives us an extra copy, three gives us an extra copy, etc. Fit length does something similar, but in meters. We can come here to the length field and specify how far we want the copies to go on for. So if I just scroll up on this, you can see it is generating the copies based on a distance. The last one here is fit curve, which allows us to bind the array modifier to a curve object, which I will show on this mesh here. With this curve selected, so this circle, which is here, the Bezier circle, if I was to go to the circle and scale it up in edit mode, you can see that the cone is creating copies based on the Bezier circle's length. Working our way down the modifier, we now see the various offset sections. Relative offset creates the copies based on the bounds of the base object. So to put that into simple terms, it is trying to look at the perimeter of the base object and make the copies outside of that. So for example, with one selected, I'm just going to come back to fix count. With one selected, the copies are generated practically right next to each other. If I was to put in two here, you can see that it's given them an extra space, which is based on the size of the object. Again, I can put in five, and it's given us even more space between each shape. Constant offset is similar, but it is based on meters. So if I was to come here to the X axis value and scroll up, you can see that it is offsetting based on a distance. Now let's turn off constant offset and come to object offset. So object offset is quite a handy tool. It basically uses another object to control the offset of the base object. So if I create a new shape, this empty for example, let's just do arrows and move it alongside our scene, that here for example. And now if we come to the main object and select the empty 001, which is this arrow here, it will pair the array to the object. However, watch what happens when I transform the empty. This would be better shown if I increase the count though. So you can get all sorts of interesting shapes by using this tool. The next tool is Merge. If the copies of the objects are close enough to each other, the Merge tool will merge the objects together. This is best shown once I apply the modifier. But first of all, I'm just going to show you what it looks like without the merge. So if I come here and apply the array modifier, and I come to edit mode, you can see that the objects aren't linked. However, if I now come back to the array modifier, select merge, 
and now apply. You can see the objects are now linked. You can also customize the merging distance here. So for example, if I just up the count and increase the offset here, if I was to increase the merging distance high enough, I guess make it three, there we go. You can see that the array modifier is trying to merge the objects together. The UV options here just offset the UV maps of each copy by a specific value that you put in here. And then the caps options just allow you to add an object to the start or end of an array. So for example, this shape here, which is called cube 004, if I just come here to cap start cube 004 and then end cube 004, as you can see, it transforms the shape to try and fit the base object. So again, you can get some very interesting shapes by doing this. I am now just going to quickly show you how an array modifier could be useful. Let's look at this shape here, for example. I'm trying to create a set of stairs. Now I could just duplicate this step here and then manually move it down, or I could use an array modifier. So with this shape selected, if I add an array modifier, I can do minus one in the Z axis, and you can see it's starting to create a step pattern. If I increase the count to 10, for example, you can see that we now have some stairs all done through the array modifier. And then I can just apply it. And there you go. So as you can see, array modifiers are very powerful. And in my personal opinion, are probably one of the most powerful modifiers in Blender. You can create so many interesting shapes just using this tool. Another example is if you wanted to make a tower, you could use an array modifier for one window, for example, and then maybe use an object offset and curve that around to make your tower shape. So really the options are limitless with this thing. Anyway, I hope this video has helped you understand array modifiers a bit better, and I will see you in the next video.